So we're on this track of where we are. Okay, chapter 29, second law says this. Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt, and ye year to year let them kill sacrifices. Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be a heaviness and a sorrow, and it shall be unto me as Ariel. The title of the message tonight is Ariel's Changes. Ariel's changes in the name of Jesus. Father, we come before you right now. We ask your blessing be upon the reading of your holy word. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name. You may be seated in the name of the Lord. So this section here and the woes, the actual woes fall into the chapters, chapter 28 through chapter 33. Six woes, okay? And we explained to you last Wednesday what the woe is in the Word of God. Fifty-one times in the Old Testament, the word woe is mentioned. And every time that woe is mentioned, it's always within the prophetic writings of Scripture. Okay? So when you talk about a woe, you're talking about a warning. You're talking about a warning of coming destruction. You're talking about... It's finished, it's done, it's over with. It's a very, very serious time of mourning that has broke into the world, okay? And so the prophet's talking about this time of devastating calamities that are going to take place. The judgments are going to fall and the mourning that will take place as a result of that. It's, it's a very, very serious time. And the prophets then are dealing with those situations that bring about the woes. You've also heard the term ah, a h ah. That's also that's really what woe is. When you say ah, you're saying woe, you're like woe. So it's it's a very serious time of declaration from the prophet's mouth. The judgments that are coming. As I begin today, I just felt the Lord speaking into my spirit, my mind. Uh, this afternoon to approach it this way. I want you to imagine a time when people are going to church and there's a crowd of people that are gathered in, that, in the church and they're going there. Uh, they're attending service, but all they have is just the outward form. There's no real change of heart on the inside of them. There's no changed life. What that means is they go to church, but they go home, and they live the same old ungodly, unrepentant, unchanged lifestyle. Amen. They live a lot like they used to when they were in the world. See, if I come to church, or I come to the house of God, and I hear the Word of God, and I go home, and I live exactly like I, the world does, whoa. Whoa. So in these chapters, God is talking about a time when Ariel, which means like a lion, or lion-like, or the lion of God. This is a prophecy about Jerusalem. Jerusalem, Ariel, lion-like, or the lion of God. They're going through the motions when they go to church. They have an outward observation of the faith. But there's no reality of change in their life. There's no transformation in their life. They are under the bondage and control of sin. They're, they give in to spiritism. And as they approach God, the Bible says in this first or 29th chapter, which the second woe, he says that they are so bad that they try to hide from God. Hide from God. And act like everything is okay with me. So it's just an outward form of religion that they're going through. There's no reality of worship unto God. There's no changed life. They're trying to hide from God who they really are. And the Bible says the situation is so desperate that the prophets, 
we would call them preachers in the pulpit today, imagine this. They don't have a clue. The preacher don't honor the people of the church coming and it's just an outward thing. No real life change, no transformation. But the preacher's in the pulpit. Imagine a day where they don't have a clue about what is going to happen. Because they don't know the Word of God themselves. And that's what Isaiah says. They don't know the Word of God themselves. And he'll go on in this chapter, and I'll read a few verses to you in a minute. And he says, if you were to bring the Bible to somebody, just a normal person, not a prophet, not a preacher, and ask them what it means, they would look at the Bible and they would say, I don't know what it means. So there is a willful, willful, willful ignorance on the part of the preachers in the pulpit and the people in the church services coming. And there's no reality of commitment or devotion to God. Their lives are just full of sin and ungodliness. And they don't understand the Bible. The prophets don't know what's going to happen. They don't know. They can't explain what's going to happen because they don't know the Bible. And people are hiding. They're hiding. And God sees what's going on. But they're hiding from God. And they're trying to make like everything's going to be okay. Amen. And he goes on as we keep as you keep going through these chapters of woe. He says another reason why there's a woe is because the people that go to church that hear those preachers that don't know the word of God, when they go in this outward observation with no real life transformation, there's no real, no, no real change in their life, in their living. He says that they even tell the preachers that preach. If you can imagine a day like this. They try to control the way the preacher preaches from the pulpit. And they say to the preachers that preach in the pulpit, they say to them, prophesy to us smooth things. Don't tell us what is right. Don't tell us what is the truth. Prophesy smooth things. Don't, don't present God to us. We don't want to know about God. Make us feel good on the inside. And so that's the situation here. If you can imagine a time where a crowd would gather to church like that and there would be woeful ignorance of the preacher in the pulpit, woeful ignorance of people in the pew, no life change, no transformation, no real living for the Lord. A people that go to the preacher if he did want to preach the truth and says, you know, I really don't like you doing that. I want you to tell me something that's going to make me feel good. And as a result of this spiritual condition of the people of God, as they're going through this, as Ariel goes through this outward observation of religion with no reality, that is really what is bringing the judgments of God or the woes of God upon that nation. The United States of America from time to time has experienced, I believe, the judgment of God upon it. Amen. And the main reason for that is because the church is not what the church should be. When the church is not what the church should be in its living, in its expression, in its confession, in its life, it brings the judgments of God upon it. So let us be a people that walk with God, not just in outward observation and, and try to be religious, you know, and try to act the act and act the part and then go home and live like the devil. Let's be a people that really do draw near to God with all of our hearts. So this first goal that comes then upon Ariel is because of that outward type of approach to God, a religious thing. You know, basically, when I got time for God, Eh, you know. But he's not going to be my life. He's not going to occupy my life. I'm not going to live for him. It's just sort of when I have time for him kind of a deal. And I'll go through the outward rituals and the outward observations, but there's no real reality of a relationship with the Lord. 
And so he says, verse 1, Woe to Ariel, to Ariel, the city where David dwelt, and year to year, let them kill sacrifices. See, God has said, just keep on bringing your sacrifices. You're just going through the outward rituals is all you're doing. Just keep doing, just keep doing what you're doing. But notice the judgment of God is pronounced upon them. Amen. Verse 2, Yet I will distress Ariel, and there shall be heaviness and sorrow, and it shall be unto thee as Ariel. It should be the Lion of God. God, amen. Amen? Amen. Yes, sir. But in case the judgment, in, in, instead the judgments of God are coming upon them. Praise the Lord. Sad situation. And so God says, I'm going to distress them. See, the situation, we, we get on the wrong side of God. We're acting the part. We're going through the motions. But we're living like the devil. We're living in sin. We're living ungodly. Uh -huh. Amen. All right. What God is saying, you're going to have problems. You didn't even know where they came from. One woe after another, one problem after another, one trouble after another, and you're going to look at it and you won't even realize that it's coming from the hand of God. Amen. You don't want to get in a place where you're on the wrong side of God. Amen. Because you'll have situations coming in your life, problems and troubles will come in your life, and you won't have a clue where Amen. it's Hallelujah. coming from. Because it may not be God, you know, say, give you a dream and say, this is why it happened. All right. God, amen, amen. I want to make sure we serve God the way we're supposed to. Amen. He said, I will bring distress upon Ariel. This is Jerusalem he's talking about. Amen. This is his people. This is the church. Amen, amen. And I will camp against thee round about. I will lay siege against thee and mount, and I will raise forts against thee. This is what God says. Jesus. Thou shalt be brought down. And shall speak out of the ground, and thy speech shall be low out of the dust, and thy voice shall be as one that hath a familiar spirit out of the ground, and thy speech shall whisper out of the dust. He'll go on and talk about that they're drunk on their pride. In Isaiah 28, we talked about this spiritual stupor that the, the people were in. They were in a spiritual stupor. Uh, he likens it to drinking, drunkenness. In this chapter, he says they're drunk, but they're not drunk with with wine, they're drunk with pride. They're full of themselves. And so now what God is saying is, He's going to bring that pride down. He's going to bring that arrogance down. These people that are walking prideful. Amen. He's going to bring it down. He's going to bring it down so low, they're going to be like a whisper coming up from the ground. You'll barely be able to hear them. See, they talk real loud right now. But there's coming a time when it'll be like a wish. That's that pride. God's going to bring it down, he says. Amen. Verse 5, More of the multitude of thy strangers shall be like small dust. The multitude of thy terrible ones shall be as a chaff that passeth away. Yea, it shall be an instant suddenly. Thou shalt be visited the Lord of hosts with thunder, with earthquake, with great noise, with storm and tempest, flame of devouring fire. Amen. Amen. So lies and deception have taken over this people. They're walking in pride. They don't know God. They're not living for the Lord. Now the Bible goes on and says, verse 7, the multitude of all nations that fight against Ariel, even all that fight against her and her munitions and this distress her shall be as a dream of a night vision. Amen. Amen. Historically, God's talking about a judgment that would come upon Jerusalem from Babylon. This reaches all the way to the end times, to the war of Armageddon. And the reason why it will come. Verse 8, It shall even be as when a hungry man dreameth, and behold, he eateth, but he waketh, and his soul is empty. Or when a thirsty man dreameth, behold, he drinketh, but he waketh, and behold, he is faint. His soul hath an appetite, so shall the multitude of all nations be that fight against Mount Zion. Amen. Amen. So God's talking about how He eventually will deliver His people. So there will be a change. Amen. Verse 9, Say yourselves, wonder, cry, ye out, and cry. They are drunken, but not with wine. They struggle, but not with strong drink. For the Lord hath poured out upon you the spirit of deep sleep, and hath closed your eyes. The prophets and your rulers, the seers, have he covered. See, that's what I was talking about earlier. Prophets don't even have a clue. Preachers don't even have a clue what's going on. Amen. 
because they don't know the Word of God. And the vision of all is to become unto you as the words of a book that are sealed, which men deliver to one that is learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. He said, I cannot, for it's sealed. And the book is delivered to him that is not learned, saying, Read this, I pray thee. He said, I have not learned. So you just give the word of God to some common individual. Even the learned individual says, I don't know what it means. And then the person that does it isn't taught. Obviously doesn't know what it means. So we need to understand the word of God. Amen. Amen. Verse 13, Wherefore the Lord said, For as much as this people draw near to me with their mouth, and with their lips do honor me, but have removed their heart far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. See? It's about the heart. Amen. See, they're going through the motions and they're talking the talk, but there's no real heart change. There's no real relationship with God. And he, when he talks about here, he says this, their, their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. What that means is that they're following their man-made religion. When it says taught by the precepts of men, it means that they're doing it their own way. They're doing it the way they want it. Not the way God has prescribed it, but the way they want it. So they, uh, they're, uh, amen. Amen. See, the problem with that, look at it again. He says, But have removed their heart far from who? Me. me. And their fear toward me is taught by the precepts of men. So if you all you have is a man-made religion, then you don't know God. See, so they don't know God. They don't have a relationship with God. They may go to church, whatever. Here's somebody get up and teach a religion. But that doesn't mean that you know God. Right. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. Amen. So this is what he's talking about. This outward form of religion. Amen. Verse 14. Therefore behold, I will proceed to do marvelous work among this people, even a marvelous work and a wonder. For the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of the prudent men shall be hid. So he's talking about this, this man-made stuff. He's going to bring it down. The pride. Third woe is found in verse 15. Woe unto them that seek deep to hide their counsel from the Lord. And their works are in the dark. They say, Who seeth and who knoweth us? Amen. They say, See, what we're doing is, we're, doing, we're going to hide from God. And God is, and they're saying, God doesn't even know what we're doing. Wow. Amen. Amen. You start living like that, you, you live this way, you know, when you go to church, but it's not a reality in your life, you get to the point where you can deceive your own selves into thinking of the way you live that you're getting away with it. You ought to say, no, you're not getting away with it. You're, trying, you're acting like you're hiding from me and you're saying, the Lord doesn't see what I'm doing. God's saying, you know, you're not getting away with it. So that woe, verse, that third woe comes as a result of this type of attitude. Amen. They want to worship God in their own terms. terms. Verse 16, Surely you turn your things upside down, shall be esteemed as the potter's clay. For shall the work say of him that made it, he made me not? Shall the thing frame say of him that framed it, he had no understanding? Amen. Is it not yet a very little while, and Lebanon shall be turned in, into a fruitful field? The fruitful field shall be esteemed as a forest. Now, this is the good news, though. Is that when you get to verse 18, and you start reading the rest of these verses, God is saying, there's a better day coming. Hallelujah. It's not always going to be woe and judgment and perjury and a time when people are just going through the motions and are religious and, and don't have a real transformation of life, a real change of life. They're going to repent. Ariel is going to change. And when she does, the Bible says, when that day comes, it's going to be a better day. It's the coming of the Lord. And he says, at that point, then people are going to know the Word of God. And he goes on and he says, in the last verse of this chapter, he says, they're going to know doctrine. They're going to know doctrine. The Word of God is extremely important to God. 
I don't know if you realize it or not, but the Bible talks about that there's one thing that God holds above His name, right, and amen. that's His Word. Amen, amen. You know how important the name of God is to God? Amen. That's that, The name of God is not just His handle. The name of God is His character. Woo. And He says He puts His Word even above His name. Wow. So we need to love the Word of God. We need to put our lives into the Word of God. And spend time with the Lord Jesus and walk with Him. Not just as a religious people. Right. But as a people that really know God. Amen. And I thank God for a better day that's coming. Amen. Amen. Salvation is coming in the future. The world is going to know. Many, many are going to know the Word of God. Look at verse 24. They also that erred in spirit shall come to understanding. They that murmured shall learn doctrine. Right. Now you know how that ultimately is going to happen? It's going to happen because God's going to come and bring judgment to the world. And when He brings judgment to the world, that's going to cause people to turn to God in repentance. And that's when this is going to take place in this context here. When Messiah comes, okay? And the Antichrist is defeated. So when you have time, read those verses. Chapter 30, we come to the fourth wall. And uh, God is talking to Ariel here about his, their rebellion. He says, Woe to the rebellious children, saith the Lord, that take counsel, but not of me, and that cover with the covering, but not of my spirit, that they may, may add sin to sin. So what he's saying is, is that his people are in, his children. God's children are in rebellion against him. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to provide themselves with their own covering. Now, Isaiah 30 says that our, the covering that we have is the Spirit of God. Amen, amen. You know what Jesus said before He got he, he ascended up to heaven? Yes. He told His disciples, said, Go you into Jerusalem and carry you there until you be endued with power from on high. Amen, amen. The word endued means to be clothed on are to be covered with the Spirit of God. Amen. Amen. So that's why you need the Holy Ghost, the evidence of speaking with other tongues, right. because that is the covering that you and I have Amen. from God. Amen. 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 We have these people here, they're, they're kind of like Adam and Eve in the garden. They're trying to provide their own covering, fig leaves. Right. Right. That don't work. Amen. You've got to have salvation, the blood of Jesus, His Spirit to be a covering. Now, in the future, uh, Israel will look to another nation to help them. And the Bible talks about Egypt here. In the past, they looked to Egypt to help them when Babylon was coming against them. Instead of trusting in God, Amen. they're trusting in an alliance with Egypt. Okay. In the future, they'll trust a, a covenant. They'll enter into an alliance and agreement with an Antichrist from Europe. So Egypt is the top of Europe here in the passage. Okay? So God is saying, don't trust in that alliance. Don't trust in a power, a foreign power. Trust in God. Amen. Let the Spirit of God be your cover. Amen. Amen. But they're, they're rebellious and they're, they want it their way. They're trying to have it their way. You know how people are. Yes, sir. Do you know yourself? You know how we want our way, right? Amen. How many of y'all want your way? Yeah. 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 <laughs> That's humanity. Humanity's like that. We just want our way, right? But when it comes to things of God, Amen. it's a totally different story. Hallelujah. Let's do it God's way. Trust in the Lord. Don't trust in something else. So the Bible said they, they cover the cover, but not in my spirit, that they what? They might add sin to sin. So they want their sin. They want to do it their own way. Now, so they're turning to Egypt in these passages for help. And, and God is rebuking them for doing this. In the future, they'll enter into a cover of the Antichrist. And God will rebuke them for doing that. Instead of trusting in uh, the Messiah. Instead of trusting in Jesus. Amen. And that's what these verses are talking about. Uh, let's go to verse 9, please. This is a rebellious people. So once again here in this fourth woe, he says they're a rebellious people. Mm -hmm. 
lying children, children that will not fear or hear the law of the Lord. So not only are these people not walking with God and uh, have a knowledge of the Word of God, yes, but they refuse to be corrected by the Word of God. So they're going to the preacher and they say, Preacher, you know, only preach things that are going to make me feel good. Well, okay, that's, that's on one level. But now the Bible says they refuse to be corrected by the Word of God. So again, these are the reasons for the judgments here. The rebellion of the children. Verse 10 would say to the seers, See not, to the prophets, prophesy not unto us right things, speak unto us smooth things, prophesy deceits. Amen. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. They don't want God. They only want to have their ears tickled. And they say, don't, don't bring this into the presence of God anymore. Amen. But what will happen is that God is going to bring judgment upon them. As a result of judgment, Ariel, which is a picture of the church, is going to turn. But they're only going to turn when the judgment of God comes. Okay? So we get verse 14. He shall break it as the breaking of the potter's vessel that is broken in pieces. He shall not spare. So that there shall not be found in the bursting of it assured to take from fire from the hearth or to take water with all out of the pit. Judgment's coming. Verse 15. For thus saith the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning in rest shall you be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be your strength. And you would not. Amen. But you said, No, for we will flee upon horses. Therefore shall you flee, and we will ride upon the swift thereof. Shall they that pursue you be swift. Amen. Amen. So judgment's coming. And the immediate response of them is to flee. Now, the Bible talks about in Matthew, Jesus said, when you see certain times coming, He said, flee to the mountains. But here He said, don't flee. So you have to be really sensitive to God. You have to be walking with the Lord. You have to have a relationship with God. Not be religious to know when to stay or when to go. And the only way you can know when to stay or when to go is by the Spirit of God. Sometimes God will say, go. And sometimes God will say stay. So you've got to be sensitive to the Lord. In this case, they're not walking in the Spirit. They're not full of the Spirit. So they're fleeing when they should not flee. Amen. Amen. Verse 17, 1,000 shall flee at the rebuke of one. At the rebuke of five shall you flee till you be left as a beacon upon the top of the mountain and as an ensign on a hill. But again... This better day that's coming, as these prophets are talking about, after these judgments, judgment comes, then the better day. Verse 18. Therefore will the Lord wait, that He may be gracious unto you, and therefore will He be exalted, that He may have mercy upon you. For the Lord is a God of judgment. Blessed are all they that wait for Him. Amen. For the people shall dwell in Zion and Jerusalem. Thou shalt weep no more. He will be very gracious unto thee as the voice that cry. Of thy cry, when he shall hear it, he shall he will answer thee. Amen? Amen. Amen. So what God is saying is that there's a better day coming. He's going to bring salvation. Hallelujah. And that's when the Amen. Messiah comes. All right. Amen. So let's go over a little bit further into the book. In chapter 31. Uh, this is the fifth woe. Verse 1, chapter 31, everybody there? Amen. Okay. Amen. Woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. Again, he's rebuking them for going to Egypt for help uh, in the time of Hezekiah. In the future, going to Europe for help. So again, woe to them that go down to Egypt for help. This is basically saying, don't go to the world. Stay on horses, trust in church because they are many, and in horsemen because they are very strong. But they look unto the Holy One of Israel, neither seek the Lord. So what is God saying? And I didn't read that very well because i got so much more on my mind. I didn't read that very well. So what, what God is saying is, 
You should be looking to the Lord. All right, Pastor, amen. Okay? You got your focus on everything else. You got your focus on the world. You don't have your focus on God. You should be looking to Him and you should be trusting in the Lord God. Amen? Real basic is what these prophets. Real basic. Okay? Teach you. Uh, go to chapter 31, same chapter. As people are turning to God, there's a better day coming. Once again. Verse 6. Turn ye unto him from whom the children of Israel have deeply revolted. Again, the prophets is calling them back to God. He's basically saying, just have revival. All right. And who is it that they've revolted against? Ultimately, it's Messiah, it's Jesus. Everybody there? Amen. Okay, verse 7. For in that day every man shall cast away his idol of silver, his idols of gold, which your own hands have made unto you for, us, for a sin. They said there's going to be a time where revival is going to take place. And people are going to get rid of the sin out of their life. They're going to get rid of the idolatry out of their life. They turn to God with all of their hearts. Amen? When the Messiah comes back. So that day's coming. Now go to chapter 32. Again, this prophet is encouraging them to turn to God. Encouraging us as well to turn to God. Verse 1, Behold, the king shall reign in righteousness, and princes shall rule in judgment. This is the Messiah. This is Jesus Christ when He comes back. And He's ruling in splendor. And he's ruling in glory. Amen. So His prophets turn to Him. That better day is going to have, uh, take place at the coming of the Lord. Amen. Amen. Verse 2 says, A man shall be a hiding place from the wind, and a covert from the tempest, as rivers of water in a dry place, and the shadow of a great rock in a weary land. So once again, in, in uh, encouragement from the prophet to turn to God. Amen. Verse 3, The eyes of them that shall see shall not be dim. The ears of them that hear shall hearken. So not only are they going to see, but they're going to be acting. Amen. They're going to be living it. Amen. Put, put in action the Word of God. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Protection of Messiah yes. is there Amen. in that time. Okay, so let's go over to verse 17. Uh, this chapter 32. Mm -hmm. And we see the change of Ariel, the change of, of Jerusalem, change of the church, you might say. Mm -hmm. Verse 17 of chapter 32. And the work of righteousness shall be what? Peace. Peace. And the effect of righteousness, quietness, and assurance forever. Mm -hmm. And my people shall dwell in the peaceable habitation in sure dwellings and in the quiet resting places. So what we see is the change. Ariel's changing. And it's talking about where she is. I mean, she's just abundant. She's in all of these various geographical locations. And she's prospering in the kingdom with the Lord. Hallelujah. So the change Hallelujah. has taken place. I mean, it's the, the way it's worded here, there's a change all over the place. Amen. Verse 19, when it shall hell coming down on the force, and sin shall be low in a low place. Blessed are they that sow beside all the waters and send forth thither the feet of the ox and the ass. All right, chapter 33, we come to the sixth woe. So you're seeing this pattern, aren't you? How God is uh, pronouncing this warning, this destruction that's coming, and the end that's coming, and the sorrowful time as a result of the spiritual condition of the people. Yes. But he always ends up encouraging them with the better day. Amen. He says, so listen, now let's get with it. Let's get yes. with it. And let's get for the Lord the way he's supposed to be for the Lord because a better day is coming. Yes. Amen. 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 All right, chapter 33, 6, Woe. Woe to thee that spoilest, and thou wast not spoiled, and that dealest treacherously, and they dealt not treacherously, treacherously with thee, when thou shalt seek to spoil, thou shalt be spoiled. And when thou shalt make an end to deal treacherously, they shall deal treacherously with, with thee. So this woe here, woe to thee that spoils, is a declaration from God of His judgment, not upon Israel, 
not upon Jerusalem, but upon the enemies of Israel. Amen. Specifically Amen. Babylon in this context. Amen. The treacherous ruler that deals treacherously, as he's already talked about before. So God is talking about he's going to judge that traitor. Uh, amen. Amen. That's coming against Israel. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 2, O Lord, be gracious unto, unto us. We have waited for Thee. Be Thou their arm every morning, our salvation also in the what? Time of trouble. Time of trouble. At the noise of the tumult, the people fled. At the lifting up of Thyself, the nations were scattered. And Your spoils shall be gathered like the gathering of the caterpillar. As the running to and fro, the locusts shall they run upon them. The Lord is exalted, for He dwelleth on high. See, this is His second coming. He hath filled Zion with judgment and righteousness. Now, here's the stability of the times. This is what will give you stability in difficult times. And wisdom and knowledge. Okay? Wisdom and knowledge. Chakmah and Da'at in the Hebrew. Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times. And strength of salvation, the fear of the Lord is His treasure. The reason why, brothers and sisters, I'm going to tell you, and you see it on the news all the time, the instability of the United States of America, the reason why there are so many problems and so, so much instability and instability, because there is no wisdom and knowledge of God. Right. Amen. Wisdom, knowing the ways of God, right. knowledge of God, is the stability of the times. If you don't have that, you're not going to have stability. Right. And that's Amen. why the United States of America is in the mess that it's in. Amen. And sad to say, a lot of these people go to church all the time. Right. Right. They'll talk about God all the time. Right. But because they operate from a wisdom that is humanistic and, and it's a man-made type of thing, there is no stability. Amen. Amen. Need direction from God. And I'm, I'm thankful tonight to tell you that President Trump has people that travel with him on that Air Force One. And they, they in that in that uh, plane, as they're flying, they get in that plane, they start praying, speaking in tongues, and prophesying in that plane. Amen. So you at least have a president. And I'm not saying he's a perfect man. None of us are. But at least you have a man that is seeking God for direction. Yeah. And, as far, and I understand, I, mean, I don't know if this is true, because I'm not next to him, I don't know. But I've heard that he doesn't make any major decision without having seeking God. If somebody will seek God and, and, and intercede and pray, and then he makes decisions based on seeking God. At least he has a desire to have hot God and the hot in his life. Praise God. So you need to pray for him. My yeah, wife said to me, the Lord spoke to her. Right, yeah. there's, there's more that be with him that are against him. All right. So you need to pray for him. So that's really interesting. You know, they get up in the air and they'll fly. And, man, they'll, they'll get to pray up in there. And they say they prophesy in the air up there in that Air Force One. So thank God for that. So this is the stability of our times is a, is a wisdom of God and a knowledge of God. Hallelujah. Amen. So if you believe you're in the last days, and I believe we're in the last days, then what is God saying to us over and over in these verses? He's saying it is extremely important for us to study the Word of God. Amen. 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 Right. Now, that's what I'm trying to do. Yes. Is to open these prophets to you and bring this word to you and teach it to you. Because that is what we need in the last days. I believe that God is raising up an end time church. And that God has called me to preach to an end time people the word of God. That is why I spend so much time in the prophets. Speaking about their judgments and why they judge the people in the past, why they're going to judge the people in the future. So we don't have that kind of a judgment. We can walk in stability. We can walk in strength. Hallelujah! Yes. We have to get in the Word of God, especially in the last days, yes, to have that, uh, that stability in your life. You're looking Amen. for stability. I think just about everybody who's got a little bit of common sense wants to have some stability. Yes. Yes. So again, verse 6, the wisdom and knowledge shall be stable. Say stability. Stability. Not by times. 
and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is His treasure. Amen. Right? So we need God. We need God. We need His Spirit. The covering of His Spirit. Amen. We need a knowledge of the Word of God in this last days. Amen. So we can have the stability that we need. Nothing will shake you. Jesus. If you've got the covering of God's Spirit. If you've got a knowledge of the Word of God. You're living for the Lord the way you're supposed to. Nothing can shake you. Doesn't mean you won't have things coming in your life. We all do. But it will not shake you. So we need God. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the Word of God Amen. in our lives. Amen. So we see God is talking to Ariel here. And uh, it's a prophecy concerning the people. The people in that land that have changed all over the place. And He's revealing what brought the change about Amen. in Ariel's people. The knowledge and the wisdom of God Almighty. Amen. 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 Now if we don't do that, if we don't get into the knowledge and wisdom of God and walk in the Spirit, verse 13, Hear ye that are far off, what have I done? And ye that are near, acknowledge my might. Amen. 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 The sinners in Zion are afraid. Right. That's right. Amen. Fearfulness right. Right. has surprised the hypocrites. Yes, sir. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Who among us shall dwell with devouring fire? Who among us shall dwell with everlasting burnings? How are you going to survive something like that? If you're a hypocrite in the church, which is what he's talking about. Yes, sir, amen. People just playing, the, they're acting the act, playing the game, but there's no real life. Amen. Transformation. Mm -hmm. He said, fear will get a hold of you. Yes, sir. You won't have stability. Yes, sir. You'll be full of fear. Amen. 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 Right, I can understand that. Amen. Sinners in Zion are afraid. Fearfulness has some uh, surprise the hypocrites. Yes, sir. But who among you shall be able to stand with the divine fire? Who among us will dwell with everlasting burnings? Here we go. He that walketh righteously and speaketh uprightly. He that despiseth the gain of oppressions, that shaketh his hands from holding of bribes, that stopped his ears from the hearing of blood, and shutting his eyes from seeing evil. He shall dwell on high. His place in fifth shall be the munitions of rocks. Bread shall he shall be given him. His water shall be sure. Mm -hmm. Thine eyes shall see the king in his beauty. They shall behold the land that is very far off. Amen? Amen. Amen. We speak of that world to come. That's what we're living for right there. But it's a, it's a walking with God. Amen. Righteously, holy Amen. before God. Amen. Uh, that will give us the ability to be able to stand right. in those difficult Amen. days. Amen. 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 Okay, let's go over to chapter 34 as I come to a close. Chapter 34 and 35. What the prophet is going to do then is in chapter 34, he's going to show you what it's like if you join yourself with the world. Amen. And then in chapter 35, he's going to talk to you about what it's going to be like if you are joined to the Lord. Okay? Amen. And it is an amazing thing. Chapter 34, verse 1. Come near ye nations to hear and hearken you people. Let the earth hear and all that there is in the world and all things that come forth of it. For the indignation of the Lord is upon what? All, all nations. nations. And His fury upon all their armies. He hath utterly destroyed them. He hath delivered them to the slaughter. Their slain also shall be cast out. Their stink shall come up out of their carcasses. The mountains shall be melted with their blood. And all the hosts of heaven shall be dissolved. The heavens shall be rolled together as a scroll. Jesus. And all their hosts shall fall down as the leaf falleth from the vine and as the falling fig from the fig tree. Amen. In Revelation 6, you'll see more about that. Amen. Amen. For my sword shall be bathed in heaven. Wow. Behold, it shall come down upon Adumea and upon the people of my curse to judgment. Amen. The sword of the Lord is filled with blood. It is made fat with fatness and with blood of lambs and goats, with the fat of the kidneys of rams. For the Lord has sacrificed in Bozra and a great slaughter in the land of Ajumea. So God is saying what's going to happen. You join yourself to the world. He said His sword is going to be bathed 
with blood. Amen. Amen. He talks about Basra. Or oh, this is when he comes back, you see. The Lord talking about when he comes back, he's going to come back, eat up Basra. He's going to move, and as he's moving, man, there's going to be a slaughtering. War of Armageddon is going to take place. Blood's going to flow to the to the bridles of the horse's mouth. Now four foot deep for a few hundred miles. Wow. That doesn't mean it's literally going to flow like that, that deep, but blood's going to splatter that high the war of Armageddon. All the way to the horse's bridles. And all we see is God in this verse. And in Isaiah, he talks about it also, as we'll get to it later, we'll look at it in more detail later. But... Uh, Isaiah 63, it talks about when he's coming from Basra and the slaughter that's going to take place there. Blood everywhere. You're going to see his garments covered. The Bible says the garments of the Lord are covered with blood. Because when he comes back that time, he's, he's not coming down across. He's coming to slay the wicked. Right. Amen, amen. His garments will be covered in blood. And he'll start with Basra and make his way over to Jerusalem to him and the war of Armageddon will be fought. It's going to be a devastating time. And that's why the Bible says his, his sword will be bathed in blood. Amen, amen. I'll keep reading. Verse 7. The unicorns shall come down with them. The bullets with the bulls and their land shall be soaked with blood. Their dust made fat with fatness. For it is the day of the Lord's vengeance and the year of recompense for the controversy of Zion. That's see, it's a day of reward for the righteous, but it's judgment upon the wicked. That's what recompense means, reward. And the strength there shall be turned into pitch, and the dust there into brimstone, and the land there shall become burning pitch. It shall not be quenched nigh nor day. The smoke there shall go up forever. From generation to generation, it shall lie waste. None shall pass through it forever and ever. So what God is talking about is this judgment as He comes back to the earth, Ijumea, which is Edom. Okay, that's Esau. That's that's Saudi Arabia today. All right. When he comes back, he's, he, his movements are going to take him into Saudi Arabia. And it talks about the bloodshed that will take place, the devastation that will take place. But as a whole, Idumea or Edom represents the world as a whole, the judgments of God. Okay, upon the world as a whole. Amen. 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 We keep going and keep. Talking about the devastation, verse 11, But the comrade, the veteran, shall possess it, the owl also, the raven shall dwell in it. And he shall stretch out upon the line of confusion the stones of emptiness. Confusion, the stones of emptiness. It's going to be tohu, bohu. So he's talking about when he says this. Confusion, tohu, and emptiness, bohu. This is the result of sin. This is a result of living for the world. This is a result of giving yourself to ungodliness. This is a result of giving yourself to sin. It's tohu by bohu. Confusion and emptiness. What God is saying is that your life is an empty life. Without God, it's a life full of confusion. Without God, it's an empty life. And so the book of Genesis talks about the Spirit of God moved upon Tohu by, by uh, Bohu, that empty place, and that uh, place of confusion. Amen. The Spirit of God moved there to bring life. Amen. Anybody that doesn't have God in their life, they have Tohu Bohu. That means confusion and emptiness. It's the result of sin, the result of joining yourself to the world. Verse 12, they shall call the nobles there unto the kingdom. But none shall be there, and all our princes shall be nothing. Amen. Amen. Thorns shall come up in her palaces, nettles and brambles in the fortresses thereof. It shall be an habitation of dragons and a court for owls. The wild beasts of the desert shall also meet with the wild beasts of the island. The satyrs shall cry to this fellow. The screech owl also shall rest there and find herself a place of rest. So what we see here, what God is saying is the desert wanderer, the desert wanderer, the desert demon, satyr. That's what it's going to be like when He brings judgment. We turned over these desert demons, desert spirits, wandering beasts. 
That's what a life is spiritually without God. Amen. This your life be turned over to demonic spirits. Be turned over to the wild beasts of the desert. That's the way it is. You wonder why people are acting like animals today? I didn't call them animals. I said acting like animals. Because they've given themselves over to sin and ungodliness. And so as a result of that, they're confused. They are empty. They have these spirits working in them. And that's why they do. And that's why they act like they act. Amen. Amen. Satire is that desert demon. You know. He talks about the wild beast of the island. Those wandering beasts. Uh, the street shall also shall rest there. Find herself a place of rest. So we just have all kinds of beasts. We have goblins. This is reference to goblins. Spirits. Demonic powers. and uh, Desert wanderers. Goat like. Goat shaped. The satyrs a goat shaped demon. And so what God is trying to show us once again. Is that when you live for the world, you give yourself to the world, you give yourself to sin, this is what's going to happen to you. Your life is going to have the judgments of God upon it. And all of these demonic type activities and beasts will begin to show up in your life. Now that's not the kind of change you want. You want the kind of change I'm about to read you about in the next chapter. Where we have people who have joined themselves to the Lord. And they're walking with God. And the picture is in the 35th chapter as I come to a close. Is these people are walking and they're returning out of captivity. In the old days in Babylon. The future days is a picture of people going into the kingdom. Yes, age when Jesus Christ is back here on the earth. Amen. But in between then and the future is the present in the spirit. So these, these things can be applied spiritual, the spiritual application to everything that I preach to you, even though these are literal things that are going to happen. Okay? When you get to chapter 35, you're going to see a totally different group of people. You're going to have Ariel, the church. And she's traveling through that desert. All right, man. All right. But as she's traveling through that desert, the Bible says where she walks, there won't even be a beast. That beast won't even be able to get on that highway. Those demonic spirits will not even be able to be there. Amen. And she's walking and she's returning and she's going up to Zion and we're going to see what it's like to live for the Lord now and in the future. Instead of being empty and confused. These creatures of the night operating in your life. Because you join the world. Brother sister, I tell you, it can happen just like that. And I'm not, I'm not trying to, you know, to manipulate you. I'm just being real with you. One minute you can be walking close to God. You know, you're, you're not just you're not just going to church to be religious. You have a desire to really have a relationship with God. In. And when you go, you're, you're ready to hear the Word of God from the preacher. Whatever he says, if it's rebuke, correction, or exhortation, encouragement, you receive it. You don't try to change what the man's preaching. You have a heart desire for God to be full of the Holy Ghost and power. And you're ready with an open heart to receive the Word of God and get rid of sin. And let God transform your life. Yes, amen, amen. But there can be an eclipse in the spirit where the darkness comes in your life. You begin to walk very contrary to God. It happened to anybody. So he goes on and he says, verse 15 there. Shall the great owl make her nest and lay in hatch and gather under her shadow? There shall the vultures also be gathered, every one with her mate. Amen. Amen. Seek ye out the book of the Lord. See how he goes back to the Word of God again? Yes, sir. Amen. Seek ye out the book of the Lord and read. No one of these shall fail, none shall want her mate. From my mouth it hath 
commanded, and his spirit, it had gathered them. He had cast the lot for them, and his hand had divided it unto them by line. They shall possess it forever. From generation to generation shall they dwell therein. Amen. Amen. Chapter 35. We see a picture of those who have trusted God, who are walking with the Lord, and are joined to Him instead of the world. I just I think this is one of the most awesome passages in the prophet Isaiah. Verse 1. See him going through the wilderness. The wilderness and the solitary places shall be glad for them. And the desert shall rejo rejoice and blossom as the rose. What is God saying? He's given the assurance to the remnant, Ariel, those who turned their heart to God. Amen. Repentant, got rid of their sins. Yes. For the Holy Ghost, walking in the Spirit. He said, you're going to make it back. You're going to return Amen. to the assurance of the return. And so here they are. They left Babylon, just like God said, 70 years after they were in captivity. And they're going through that wilderness. Amen. Just like God said they were. Amen. Amen. Just like He said in His word through the prophet Isaiah, through the prophet Jeremiah. And He says as they're going, He says that place, that one shall uh, be glad for them. The desert's going to rejoice. Yeah. And blossom as a rose. Amen. When have you ever seen a desert blossom as a rose? Yeah. See, God has shown you what it's like to walk with God. Yes, sir. Your desert place yeah. can be transformed. Yeah. He said there's a transformation that's taking place. You're coming out of sin. You're coming out of captivity. Salvation's there. Redemption's there. And as you're moving, all of a sudden, that desert place that you used to walk in, Hallelujah. it starts transforming. All right, all and right. roses begin to grow Amen. in that place. Hallelujah. Rejoicing. The Bible says that this is speaking of this group. It shall blossom abundantly and rejoice even with joy. And seeing in the glory of Lebanon shall be given unto it. The excellency of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord and the excellency of of our God. Amen. Verse 3. Strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. See, as they're going and the transformation takes place of that desert, they're going and it's rejoicing. And they've been afraid. I mean, you can imagine you're going through the wilderness, you're seeing all these desolations here. Maybe you hear the cry of the satyr. Wow. Or the lilith. Lilith, distant in the future. The female demon. Ooh. And I, that's not one of them. The satyr, the goat demon. Right. Amen, amen, and you're full of fear because you hear them screeching in the night. Yeah. You hear the screech owl screeching in the night. Yeah. And you're full of fear. And as you're moving, all of a sudden, Hallelujah. your hands get stronger. Hallelujah. And your knee, your feet get strong. Hallelujah. And you're walking in, and the fear is leaving your life. Right. You're no more, no more, no longer tormented. Right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Transformation. Ariel has changed. Amen. Beautiful. Strengthen the weak hands, confirm the feeble knees. Say to them that are filled for heart, be strong. Fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance, even God with a recompense. He will come and say, Hallelujah. The prophet saying, God is with you. He's with you, so be strong. Strengthen your hands. You feel like giving up tonight? You're weary, you're tired, whatever. He said, Don't do it. He said, Strengthen, strengthen the weak hands and confirm the feeble knees. And keep on walking with God. And as you walk with God, that transformation is going to begin to take place. Hallelujah. Say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Fear, fear will go away. Hallelujah. And God will come and reward you. Recompense. Hallelujah. The presence of God is there. Amen. And the Bible said, Then the eyes of the blind shall open, the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Then shall the lame man leap as a heart. The tongue of the dumb sing for the wilderness shall, for in the wilderness shall waters break out and streams in the desert. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. God's taking care of His people. 
And then you can see it. You can see it. They're on that highway, and they, all of a sudden they're walking with God and strengthening their hands and feeble knees. Fear is going away. Yeah, they're walking all of a sudden this desert. And wow. then this highway, this highway, yeah. spiritually speaking, starts ascending. They get up on that highway and they start rejoicing. That means they're spinning around, they're dancing, Amen. they're living. They've been saved by the power of God. And, and what is that highway that's ascended up there in that place? It's called the highway of holiness. The main man is leaping. Eyes, eyes are open. Ears of the dead are unstopped. The parched ground shall become a pool. And the thirsty land springs of water in the habitation of what? Dragons. Where each lay shall grass with reeds and rushes. See what God is showing? As they're going through that desert, a miracle is taking place. A transformation is taking place. A change is taking place. This is what you can have in the spirit right now. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Water. Amen. Here's that raised highway. Oh, amen. Thank you, Lord. And the highway shall be there. And the way. And it shall be called the way of holiness. Amen. In the New Testament, the Bible said, Jesus said, I am the way. The yes. Truth, and the life. No man comes the Father set by me. And so this highway that they're on is called this holiness highway. And it's elevated, it's raised. And they're on this highway, the way of God. Jesus is the highway. He's the one that's leading us on that highway as we're joined to him. The highway shall be their way. It shall be called the way of holiness. The unclean shall not pass over. But it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools, shall not err their end. They're going into the presence of God. Amen. Right. Amen. In the presence of God. Walking with God in holy security. Uncleanness is not there. Woo! Come on. Beasts are not there. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. He said the, the way the unclean shall not pass over, but it shall be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. He said it's so easy to find Hallelujah. that even the fool can find it. Amen. God didn't make salvation hard to find. He made it easy Amen. to find. Amen. He said even the fool. Hallelujah. He made it possible for even the fool to find it. Praise God. Praise God. It will be for those the wayfaring men, though fools shall not err therein. Verse 9, no lion shall be there, nor any ravenous beast shall go upon thereon. It shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. Amen, amen. See? Just rejoicing and praising God, the beast, the false prophet, the antichrist in the future. Keep me on that highway. Amen. This is the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A miracle. Amen. Verse 10, the ransomed of the Lord, that's the redeemed, shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. See, they got a crown on their heads. Yes, sir. They're ruled and they're reigning. You know what the crown is? Right. Joy. joy. The crown of rejoicing. All right. Amen. Now, for those of you who are looking at this thing, well, I can't wait for that day to come. And the Spirit's already here. Hallelujah! Yeah. Yeah. So as you're going through that desert in your life, right. you're redeemed by the blood, you get full of the Spirit of God, you start rejoicing. Yeah. And your desert starts blossoming like a rose, and there's water that's there, and God's provided for you. The presence of God is there, and you're going up with the people of God, and there's no enemy that can defeat you. Because they can't, even, they can't even get on that highway called holiness. And the people of God are just sick rejoicing. And let me spin around and not only that, but they got a crown on their head. And the crown on their head is the joy of the Lord. We 
was the last time you were with church and saw that? Most times you go to church, people are so full of their trouble. That's why Ariel has to be changed. And God is in the house to do that. God can take your captivity and cause you to return. And as you come out of that captivity, put you on that highway that's elevated so that the uh, enemy can't even touch your life. And before God spirit, you drink that water and you, you just begin to dance and rejoice and spin around. And people look at your head and they say, that person got a crown of joy on their head. Deemed of the Lord, verse 10, the ransom of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with songs and everlasting joy upon their heads. Hallelujah. They shall obtain joy and gladness and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. And it's all by the blood of Jesus Christ. Your saving power. You don't have to be religious. You don't have to just come to church and go through the motions. And be religious. And be defeated by sin. And be defeated by the devil. Be defeated by the world. Just come to church. You know, hoping for the best. You don't have to be that way. You trust God. You cling to God. You walk with God. You be full of the Holy Ghost. You get into the Word of God. You live for God. And you watch Him as, as you go into His presence with singing and praise and worship. You know what's going to happen? He's your scout. And He'll say to you, this is the way. Walk ye in. Hallelujah. And when He says, this is the way. Walk ye in. He's always going to put you point to the highway called holiness. So He is your scout that is leading you through life. You don't, don't think you're looking for him like you know, an individual out there in the front. You're being led from within. When you get the Spirit of God, He's leading you from within. And this is what He has for the people of God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sign shall flee away. This completes the six woes. And he does it in such an amazing way. Amen. He says, join yourself to the world. And the judgment's coming. Join yourself to Jesus Christ. And this is the salvation that you can experience in a relationship with him. Yes. It's not just for the future, it's for right now. Amen. So God's calling you to walk in victory. Amen, Pastor. Amen. We are not we have not been put in this world. To be defeated. Right. You know, and even though battles come against you, the enemies come against you or whatever, you are not supposed to succumb to that. You are supposed to walk in victory and celebration and praise and understand. Have an understanding of the word of God. Of the great salvation power of God in your life. And tonight I stand before you as you please stand. I close. I stand before you victorious. I'm telling you tonight, I stand before you victorious. And I believe you to see God do great and awesome things in this church. You know, and we've seen God do great and awesome things before. But I believe you to see great and awesome things in this church from God like we have never seen before. And I, mean, and I say that, that's saying something. Because we have seen mighty moves of God in this house. It's not behind us, it's in front of us. So I'm walking in victory today. God's calling you to walk in victory. We're not like some churches and I'm not trying to boast or anything that don't know what's going on because we have a knowledge of the book. Hallelujah! Amen. Hey, Lord, thank you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray, God, that you would give your people a vision for this glorious kingdom, this glorious experience that we have in you. We rejoice in you, God, today. We are more than conquerors through Jesus Christ, our Lord. We thank you for hearing our prayers. Saving us and deliverance. us. Lord God, let there be a change in our life. Let there be a change in us. That we may walk, and we will walk, in that celebration of the redeemed. 
In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. You're dismissed in the name of the Lord.